Hey everyone, it's Jacqueline. So today I thought I would sit down and do a little, uh, little get ready with me. I feel like I haven't sat down and talked through a makeup look in a while. And I have a special event to go to tonight, so I'm gonna get all done up. I feel like I have less excuses as my life goes on to get like fully done up. So I uh, thought I would celebrate the occasion and do a little get ready with me. So basically this is the makeup look that's kind of like my go-to, like kind of like a soft natural glam look. Um, soft natural glam, I feel like that's like the most annoying um, buzzword. So I'm gonna start it off with the Tarte Quench Hydrating Primer. You know, I actually haven't tried a lot of Tarte products, which is surprising because they're all vegan and cruelty free and um, everyone raves about their products. So I'm just starting to get into it. I've been using this primer lately. My skin is more, I guess my skin texture is a bit more normal now. I used to be a lot more oily. So I find I lean towards more hydrating products, especially like now, cause it's like fall time, it's getting a bit cooler out. So um, love a good little hydrating base. I always like to prep my lips with some lip balm. I'm gonna use the Glossier CoconutBalm.com and I use it directly from the tube. I know that's gross, but this is my truth. So starting off with some foundation, I'm actually not as tan as I'd like to be, especially with my dress that I'm wearing. I think it would look a lot better if I was more tan and glowy, but realistically, I have not been in the sun for like two months, so we're just working with my natural color. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little mix today of Makeup Forever Ultra HD. This one's in 117, just cause this one's a bit lighter. And I'm like so close to finishing this up, so I just wanna finish it. It's always so satisfying when you finish a makeup product. And I've got the Smashbox Studio Skin in shade 2.2. Yeah, I feel like if I mix those, that'll be a good, a good little concoction. Ooh, I think this is gonna be a pretty good color match. So I am just gonna put this all over the skin. My skin has actually been pretty good recently. I feel like my skin is always very temperamental, even ever since I stopped taking Accutane and really got the bulk of my acne under control. Like I still would get breakouts and especially on my cheek areas, you can still kind of see a bit of texture. Um, but the past like few weeks in particular, my skin has been pretty good and like the texture's been smooth. There hasn't been too much redness, which is pretty much a rarity for me. So I've been just like feeling good about my skin. And you know what? It's so true. I feel like whenever your skin is good, it's a lot more fun to apply makeup. Like when my skin was really bad, I actually used to hate putting makeup on it just because I felt like A, I was either like clogging up my skin or it wasn't good for my skin. And then also I feel like sometimes it would almost make the acne more noticeable because there'd be so much product on it. So I definitely enjoy doing my makeup a lot more and using more full coverage products when I don't need it, if that makes any sense. And I know being able to say that is definitely coming from a place of privilege because my entire life I've dealt with acne. So it feels weird to be able to say that, but. So when I'm applying this, my go-to is still always a beauty blender. I just find that it makes the skin look the most natural, but it definitely isn't gonna give you the most full coverage. So if you do want more coverage, I would go with like a buffing brush, but my little beauty blenders never steer me wrong. And this one is so dirty. I definitely need to clean this, but. Oops. Okay, next up, I'm gonna go in with some concealer. I've actually been using the MAC Studio Fix Concealer lately. This one's in NW15, which looks super, super light. But for under my eyes, I've actually been really liking to go with a lighter, more highlighting um, concealer. I normally use the Creme Brulee NARS Creamy Concealer, but this one sometimes can be a little too heavy and cakey for under my eyes, where it's a lot more delicate. Whereas that's why I really like the MAC one, it's because it's super thin and like really lightweight. So, um, yeah, I've been using this one for the past like week or so and I, I like it, it still gives you enough coverage. So just a little bit like that, it looks super <laughs> jarring and super bright, but it blends in pretty good. I feel like I've actually been having a lot more fun lately playing around with makeup. There was a while where like, maybe like, I don't know, for six months, I was getting so in the routine of just doing my makeup look, like my go-to everyday makeup, I wouldn't change it up, I wouldn't try any new products. And I don't know, just made makeup so not fun. And the past like month, I've kind of cleaned up my collection. Hello? Did you guys hear that? That was so freaky. I just heard like a noise come from my bathroom and I'm completely home alone right now. Okay, well this is great. My house is haunted. Wow, love that for me. Anyways, what was I saying? Um, yeah, so I kind of went through my makeup collection recently, did a big like clean out and put aside some products that I really want to play around with and I don't know, just kind of got back into what made me fall in love with doing makeup is experimenting with new products and doing new looks. And I'm also just gonna bring that on the inner corner and a little bit over the lids as well, just to blend that out. Oh my goodness, okay, so the other day, I finally watched A Star Is Born. I am so obsessed with it, oh my goodness. Okay, so I love Lady Gaga to preface, like I've already, I just knew I was gonna like it because she was in it. 
So I'm a huge fan of her in general and something about her as a person. I mean, not only is she an incredible woman and does so much greatness in the world um, and is obviously super talented, but something about her when she performs and just when she speaks, I just believe every single word and thing that she says. Like she puts so much emotion and she's so genuine with um, just who she is as a person. So I actually wasn't surprised that she turned out to be such an incredible actress because she truly does like wear her heart on her sleeve. And it was just such a good movie and I was crying in the movie theater and it takes a lot for me to like cry in public like that. And I was in there with my, I was sitting in there with my friend Tori and we were both just sitting there like sobbing at the very end of the movie. We just had to sit there for like a good 10 minutes after. Everyone was filing out and we were just sitting there like just sobbing. It was so good. Anyway, so I've been singing the soundtrack for like the past three days ever since I saw it. I'm gonna go back again tonight and rewatch the movie because I'm just so obsessed with it. Like, I just haven't been this into a movie in a while, so I'm just very excited about it. I feel like the whole world though is kind of obsessed with it. I've been seeing everyone tweet about it and speak the praises, and rightfully so. It was, oh, just so good. If you haven't seen it yet, go watch A Star is Born. Okay, so we are looking bright and concealed. And it's storming outside right now, so the lighting keeps changing, so I feel like it looks really dark and everything looks really blue on camera right now, but please bear with me. Okay, so I'm gonna go with just a little bit of concealer, just on a few of like the little hyperpigmentation and the blemishes that I have there. I'm gonna go in with my tried and true NARS Creamy Concealer. This one is in the shade Custard, and I think I'm actually gonna mix it with a little bit of Macadamia, which is a shade darker, just because sometimes Custard can be a little too pink, I find. So I'm just gonna go in, this is like a flat top, Sigma brush, the P80. I've had this brush for honestly like four years and it still remains one of my favorites. It's just so good at really layering um, product on and really building up the coverage. But you also have the ability to really buff it and diffuse it out. So it makes it the ideal uh, pimple coverage uh, brush right here. Okay, next up, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Laura Mercier setting prep, setting powder, setting powder. This is just my, ugh, English. This is just my tried and true powder. Um, I pretty much use this almost every single time I do my makeup. I kind of just like to do this on the central points of my face. So, so right in the center under my eyes where we just put that concealer, a light brush over the lids as well. And then just whatever's left over through the T-zone. I like to do actually along like my kind of where my smile lines I guess would be just so the product doesn't crease or move and then that's pretty much it actually been way more into lighter powder lately then I'm gonna go in with some bronzer I've been loving loving the Hoola bronzer which I know is such like an OG product everyone always talks about it but for a while I was just not into how it was matte and the fact that it is so pigmented but I've just been embracing it a lot more and I don't know why it took me so long because it is a really fantastic product. I'm just gonna go in with a big fluffy brush like this. I always like to start with my cheeks. So just kind of lightly dusting the product on there. So I'm just bringing this down the neck. Ooh, hello rain. It is like pelting the windows right now. Okay, I'm gonna move on to a little bit of blush. Now, blush is something I normally get like very into routine with products, but I have been using something new. I've been doing Melba from MAC on the um, bulk of the cheek. And then I got this new Fenty product. Actually, Fenty saw my video, my uh, robot makeup tutorial, and they DM me on Instagram. They're like, hey, we wanna send you some Fenty product. And I was like, are you kidding me? This is a dream come true. So they sent along a bunch of their products and this one being one of them. This is the Kilowatt Highlighter Duo in Girl Next Door and Cheek Freak. And Chic Freak, Chic Freak, Chic Freak. And um, I've been using the Chic Freak, the more shimmery, darker one. And I've been popping that mainly on like the top of the apple of the cheekbone. So I haven't been using it as a full highlighter. It's a bit too dark for that. But just on the top of the apple, it makes it look a lot more round and full. And I just love the color of it. So super obsessed with that. So I'm gonna do a little combo um, of those products, starting with a smaller brush. This one here is a Luxie brush. It's actually, I think, a highlighting brush. But I've been very into more smaller, um, precise brushes for blush. So I'm just gonna kind of dust a bit of that on. And blush is something that I find you really wanna build up in layers because it's so easy to go overboard with it. But if you put just the right amount, it really just kind of warms up your face, makes you look like, I feel like you look so cute when you have blush on. I just love a little, a little rosy cheek. And then just going in with that Fenty color, just popping it kind of right on the center part, like right underneath the eye if I was to be looking straight forward. 
Okay, now we're gonna move on to a little eyebrow. Um, and again, since I lighten my hair, I feel like I use a lighter eyebrow pencil. I normally would use the uh, Benefit Precisely My Brow in shade four, but I've been opting for shade three, just because, especially with the lighter hair, the eyebrows just look darker already. So going for a bit of a lighter shade just works a bit better. For some reason when I do my eyebrows, this is when I always like hold my breath. They have to be very still and concentrated. Next, I'm just gonna go in with some clear, ah, what was that? Oh, my lip liner. I'm gonna go in with some clear brow gel and I just use the 24 hour brow setter. Again, from Benefit, they just work really good together, these two products. And I kind of go through phases of sometimes like feathering my brows up a little more and then other phases of just like kind of letting them lay naturally. So it depends what I'm in the mood for. So funny, I remember at first I actually hated this product just because I thought it was way too crunchy and like made my eyebrows like so like solid in one unit. Like it would be like I almost hairsprayed my eyebrows or glued them down. But now that's actually the reason that I love it is because I can be out all day. I never touch up my makeup when I go out. Like I never bring anything in my bag other than maybe like a lip balm or a lip liner. But whatever goes on my face in the morning, doesn't matter what I'm doing, where I'm going, whatever's on my face will just stay that way all day. Um, so I like products that really are long lasting. And that's why I love this brow, this brow gel because nothing moves. And actually, you know what? While I have this eyebrow product out, I am gonna go in with the shade, the same one in shade three and do some little fake freckles. So I just kind of like to focus them on the nose. You know who I actually love to look for for inspiration? Um, I think it's, what's her handle? Nikki Makeup on Instagram or Nikki underscore makeup, something like that. She does the best faux freckles and feathered brows. I just am such a fan of her work. And I feel like every time she posts a new makeup, I end up saving it on my save tab on Instagram because I'm like, oh, it's just so good. I want to like look back and just stare at her work all day. So yeah, anyway, she inspires me to do fake freckles, although I'm nowhere near um, as good as she is. Always so funny though, I feel like you definitely always want what you don't have. Because whenever I talk to my friends who have a full face of freckles, they're always like, oh, I just want to cover it up. Like, what products do you recommend that are most, like, the most full coverage? And I'm like, are you kidding me? I draw them on because I wish I had freckles. Like, don't cover them up. But that's always the case. When you're a brunette, you want blonde hair. When you're a blonde, you want brunette. I think it's just kind of like the fun though of playing around and trying something else out. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of highlight I think I'm gonna go in with the halo scope from Glossier and I just kind of like to dot a little bit of that on my fingers and this really doesn't have too much shimmer in it it's just more of like like I want to say like Vaseline for your face just like a bit of like shine so I'm just gonna pop that on the rest of the cheek where we didn't put the Fenty highlight I'm gonna go in with the Too Faced natural matte eyeshadow palette and I've pretty much been using this for the past like two three weeks straight and oh, right, there we go. Um, and I basically just use these, the smaller shadow ones here. I don't really use these lighter ones. Um, so I thought this palette it smells really good too. Every time you open it up, it's kind of like baby powder-ish, but like in a good way. Anyways, I'm gonna start off by grabbing like a flat shader brush. I'm gonna use my uh, MAC 2 239 here. And I'm gonna go in with cleavage, which is more of like this pink, Kind of like mauvey brown, mauvey brown, mauvey brown. I feel like people say mauve differently depending on where you live. I always grew up saying mauve, mauve, yeah. Yeah, that's what I used to say. But then all these YouTubers and people that I used to watch online used to always say mauve, which sounds so weird to my ear, but now I'm like almost more used to saying mauve than mauve. So I don't really know, how are you supposed to say it? So I'm really just packing this color all over the lid. And right away, you'll notice that the more pink tones in this really make my green eyes pop, which is why I've been loving using this. I'm just gonna add a little bit more to my brush and then run that along the lower lash line. And just kind of connecting it on the outer corner with what we've already done on the lid. Okay, then I'm gonna go in with more of a clean brush. This is actually still kind of like a shader brush, but this one's a lot more fluffy. So it's good for getting right under there. And I'm just gonna start by dusting this color up and out. Following almost like the same line as my cheekbone. And I feel like everyone says this, but honestly with any eyeshadow look, you really can't over blend. I feel like the more diffused the color is, the better it looks. So I always like to, you know, put aside a good couple minutes and commit to 
buffing everything out. Okay, and then to buff out the top lid, I like to go with a bigger brush. This is a MAC 217. This is my favorite brush of all time. I'm not kidding when I say I think I have eight of these brushes and I use them pretty much for everything. I could do, I could probably do an entire face of makeup with just a MAC 217. 217? For a second I thought I called it the wrong name. Um, but yeah, no, this brush is, actually I'm pretty sure that this was my first makeup brush purchase as well. So it also holds a little, a little special place in my heart. I'm gonna go in with a bit of Au Natural, which is a bit warmer of a color, and just kind of let that be kind of the transition color between what we just put on and um, with the skin. So I'm gonna go in, actually, this one's more of a tapered blending brush. This is a Urban Decay brush, the E209 brush. And just putting a little bit of that on the brush and focusing it more towards the outer corners, actually. And I feel like this just really helps get from the more warm skin tone to the cooler eyeshadow shade and make it blend a bit easier. So once you have the product kind of placed in the area that you want, just go back in with the clean blending brush. Okay, then I'm gonna go back in with that really fluffy shader brush and go in with Less Is More, which is more of like a neutral brown and intensify this lower lash line with it. And I'm really just focusing this on like the outer half of the under eye. Guys, okay, so you're not gonna believe what I did last weekend. If you guys follow me on Instagram, then you guys have already seen it. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> anyways, I did the CN Tower Edge Walk, which is basically, the CN Tower is like the biggest, um, the biggest building in Canada. One of the biggest buildings, one of the tallest buildings in the world. It used to be the tallest building, but it's definitely not anymore. Anyways, it's like this little like needle point looking thing. And, um, I did the edge walk, which is when you walk on the outside of it and kind of like you're attached obviously by um, a little rope, but you kind of lean over the edge, you walk all the way around. It's like, I think like somewhere close to 400 meters tall. Um, and you're just kind of out there chilling. It's a beautiful view of the city, but it was so, so terrifying. I didn't really know if I was afraid of heights or not. Like I thought I would be okay. And it actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Like we were going up the elevator and I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna get like really clammy hands soon. but. You know, it wasn't that bad. The scariest part was definitely leaning over for the first time. But once you're out there walking, like you're attached, you feel pretty safe. But it was such an amazing experience and oh, it was just so much fun. I did it with my cousin Megan and we were just like screaming the whole time and I will honestly never forget that. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with this shade here. It's called Hook Up and it's definitely more of like a pumpkin pie, ready brown color. And I'm gonna go in with my shader brush. Actually, I'm gonna use a different shader brush that is already dirty and I'm gonna just add that tilt my head back almost like use it as an eyeliner on the top of your eye but really focus the color just on the outer third then I'm just gonna take that color and start to blend that in blending it more into the crease and into the lash line as always with my tutorials you never need to use the exact same products that I talk about in videos I remember that's something I used to obsess about especially when I was younger and didn't really have that much makeup I would be like, oh my god, I need to buy this, this, and this. And obviously, makeup is so expensive nowadays, like it can really add up. So you definitely don't need the specific products that I'm talking about. I feel like if you really master your technique, any artist can recreate the same look, even with the most, you know, least expensive products. So as long as you have some makeup that's in the similar color family, it doesn't need to be the same brand, you can definitely recreate these looks. I think that's a common misconception that a lot of people have. They'll be like, oh, if I buy more high-end makeup, then my makeup will look more like, like better. And that's just not true. You definitely still have to have some technique. I've seen people recreate, or I've seen people design the most beautiful makeup looks using the most affordable drugstore products. And I've seen people who have amazingly expensive and beautiful, luxurious makeup, and it doesn't look half as good as the more you know affordable alternatives. So it really speaks to people's skill set and artistry, so. You definitely don't need to obsess over, you know, specific products. Okay. Oh! Ah, geez. Okay. That's about the fourth thing I've dropped in this video. Um, classic me. I'm going to go in with a little bit of mascara. Now, I feel like I talked about this in a video. I think I put this in a monthly favorites. Glossier Lash Slick might just be the best mascara to ever happen to me. I am so obsessed with it. It's great because it's such an intense black, but it holds the curl. It's really lightweight. It doesn't clump up at all. It's very lengthening. And it isn't waterproof, which is pretty rare for me to like a non-waterproof mascara. 
but it's water resistant and I haven't had any problems with it smudging at all. Wow, this sounds like this is an ad. This is not an ad. They're not sponsoring me to say that. Um, I just genuinely love it that much. If you guys have tried it or are going to buy it and end up testing it out, let me know what you guys think. If you guys are as obsessed with it as I am. I'm gonna do a really light coat on the bottom of my lashes too. Now I'm gonna do my classic Jaclyn step that I can never skip over, my Marc Jacobs highlighter. Now this one is in the shade Earthquake. I either use Earthquake or Brown Out, which is just like a brown um, eyeliner. And I put this on my upper waterline. This just makes your lashes look way more full. It's one of those things that makes a very subtle difference, but it makes a difference. Can you guys see? You're like, I can't really tell, but this one just looks a little better, right? Okay, now I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a shimmery shadow. I've been loving these new NARS shadows. Actually, I'm not sure if they're new. They're new to me though. These ones are in the shade Silk Road 1 and Silk Road 2. So it's just like a shimmery kind of pinky, pinky color. And I'm gonna start by taking the lighter shade and just popping that on the inner corner. Then I'm gonna go in with the more dark pink shade and kind of blend that into the lid color. Going back into the lighter one, I'm gonna go on my Cupid's bow. Okay, now if you guys don't know it already, I'm obsessed with lip liner. I literally mm, love a good lip liner. Um, I've been loving using this one. This is Max Whirl Lip Liner. So I'm just gonna blot off my lip balm that I had on. And then I'm just gonna overline my lips like I normally do. And then basically what I always do is kind of do like a subtle ombre lip and blend the lip liner into my natural color. And that just makes your lips look so much more full. Like I'm not kidding you, I get questions all the time, whether it be my, from my friends or from you guys. And you guys are like, oh my gosh, what do you do to your lips? Or like, how do you get them to look so big? And it's honestly just a trick of contouring and adding depth. And yeah, I don't know, it's pretty magic um, what some makeup can do. And my advice for getting the most natural, natural looking overlined lips is to actually do the lip liner when your mouth is completely like neutral, when it's like frozen, um, versus trying to like pull your lip a funny way to do it, because it's good to see how your lip is gonna sit in the end and get that to look the most symmetrical, if that makes any sense. Okay, and then once I'm done putting the actual lip liner on, I just kind of like to blend it out with my finger actually. Okay, so that is pretty much it with the lip. So then I will toss on a little bit of gloss as well. I either use my Glossier Clear Gloss. I do really like this Clinique one. I've been using this for years. Clinique um, in shade six. That's more of like a brownie color. I'm gonna go for a little bit of clear today though. And I like to put it just on the center and then blend out with my finger again. Okay, and then finishing step that I like to do is a little bit of setting spray. This makes such a big difference. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter. This will last you through rainstorms, sweaty concerts, um, long crazy days. This stuff really just makes your makeup last all day. It's very, very true to the name, lasts all night. Um, so I'm just gonna do a good couple of sprays all over my face. Okay, so that is basically the makeup look for tonight. Um, I'm debating, I don't really know if I wanna do my hair or not. Like it's obviously curled, these were like yesterday's curls. Um, I don't know if I wanna do like a little little bobby pin action, like a little 90s clip or something. Um, anyways, I'm gonna go put on the outfit now. It's actually a gown, well it's like a two piece set. It's actually from Sisters the Label. It's so, so pretty. It's this beautiful silky champagne color. And like I was saying at the beginning, I think this would look better if I had a tan on right now, but uh, I don't, so this is my truth. But yeah, this dress is absolutely stunning. I'm obsessed with it. They actually sent it to me in the mail, which was the kindest thing ever. I opened it up and I was like, oh my gosh, this is the most Jacqueline piece ever. Um, I'm not getting paid to do this. They're not sponsoring this or anything, uh, but they did send along a code if you guys want $50 off. So you can use the code Forbes and um, yeah, get 50 bucks off if you go to purchase one. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below if you do wanna see more chatty get ready with me's. I mean, you guys know me, I love to chat. So uh, I'd love to do some more if you guys wanna see them. Anyways, thanks guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notifications if you don't have them on yet, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.